Okay, so in the last set of videos and in the last class, I talked about why I don't consider this a map. This is a picture. Um, now, we use raster imagery sometimes, and that is uh, also a picture, or it's, a, it's an image is what we would say, um, where there are cells and pixels and that kind of thing. Um, this has cells and pixels, but I wouldn't call it a map because it, it would be very difficult to line up other pieces of data with this piece of data. Um, and why is that? Well, we're looking obliquely at the world, right? So maps have tended to be as uh, planimetric as possible, um, at least until recently. Um, and the reason we do that is because it's much easier to line things up when we're looking from the same direction all the time. So for instance, this phenomenon right here, we call this an object, right? This is a river. Um, and what we'd want to do is, let's say we wanted to make a map where we showed the river in relation to um, you know, the elevation or rainfall. Let's just say elevation for now. Well, in order to do that, uh, we would need to measure it, let's say, from the sky, or uh, we need to survey it and kind of represent it on a piece of paper. Um, and the two ways that computers do that are through raster and vector data. So we're going to talk about that. Um, now, we've just looked at an object, which means that that's a river, right? Um, there's a place where it is and a place where it isn't. Um, let's pretend that river has a fork in it. Um, this is the raster data model and how the raster data model might represent that, where zero means that there's no river, and one means that there is a river, and let's say two is where the fork in the river is. Um, that way we can say ah, one means the main river and two means a tributary of that river. Um, this method uh, requires that there be a cell for every location on the earth that we want to represent. Well, the vector data model says why are we recording kind of every location when we only really need to record the object where it is um, on the ground. So the vector data model says, OK, I'm going to put a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here. Or what we would say is this is a vertex, another vertex, another vertex, or another vertex. And these vertices kind of record a line in this case. And so vector data is always points or lines or shapes or polygons is what we say. And so um, in this case, this might have uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six um, vertexes or vertices, uh, but the, the file knows that it should draw a line between these two and draw a line between these four, uh, and, and it would store them in kind of a separate way, and I'll show you that in a couple minutes. So that's how we do the, the kind of object version of the world. Now, if I was to go back and say, how do we measure elevation, right? We want to represent elevation. Well, it's going to be kind of hard to do that with um, with the vector data model, though we can do that. Um, I'm going to show you that the other type of kind of representation we have is a field or kind of continuous data. This is data that we can measure kind of everywhere. And raster does a good job at that. It says, oh, well, I already have a pixel that represents um, different points on the Earth. And, it's everywhere that we want to measure. So that's the way we would do it with kind of a raster, uh, just have every cell represent a raw value. And these colors are here to help you see kind of what we're looking at, but in the actual file itself, there are no colors. The colors are added in the GIS program to help our brains understand the data. And I'll show you uh, more of that in a moment as well. In the vector world, we would use something like contours or kind of a point cloud. Um, you know, we could change each of these cells into a point instead of into a cell. Um, but in order to use the vector data model, um, we have to kind of get creative with the field. So in general, I would say the vector data model is very good at doing object-oriented um, kind of phenomena, whereas raster is better at doing kind of the field-oriented phenomena. They, they can do both. Each, each data model can do both objects and fields, but it's kind of helpful to visualize what the differences are. So let's pretend this is another river here. Um, this is a screenshot I got when I googled the forks. Um, and not a screenshot, just a, a, you know, a, a Google image. So if you google the forks main, you'll come up with this river. 
though it's not actually the kind of activity that whatever. Um, object in the real world. This is a picture, right? This isn't a map because it's oblique. It's difficult for us to line up other data with this piece of data. So in the raster world, we would go back here and we'd say, okay, well, our file shows zeros and ones and twos. And in the file, they're just a list of numbers like this, right? Um, except that they're referenced kind of to latitude and longitude. So this image is still an image in the same way that this is an image, except I've zoomed in and we're looking at the pixels right now. And in this case, I don't know if you can remember, but the, the numbers are more of a name. They're nominal. The one represents not uh, you know, a quantity of one, but just one means this is a river, and two means, oh, this is also a river, but it's a tributary, whereas zero means no river. Right? In the vector world, we would store this as an object. And instead of storing every single value, we store only um, kind of the objects and the vertexes or the vertices. And in a shape file, you'll notice when we start working with them, they're a bundle of files, right? If I highlight this, you'll see that there's kind of, um, there's the shape part that tells us, yep, Okay, vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, vertex four, five, six, seven. And it tells us exactly what the latitude and longitude are of each one. But that's just the shape um, of it. The, the shape files also have attributes which are stored in a DVF file. So these two attributes relate to each shape. And we would say, okay, um, the tributary ID number two has three vertices and those are where their locations are. Um, and it's, let's say it's the Dead River and this is the Kennebec, and we have another attribute that we can reference, the length of each, of each one. Now, that also means that the vector data model, while it might be a smaller file because it's storing only the vertices, it can actually store many more attributes than the raster file. The raster file usually can only store one value per location right? Ones, twos, zeros, or other numbers. But there's just, if there's only one band to the raster is what we say. If there's one band to the raster, then one attribute is all we can record. Um, whereas the vector model, we can have one shape, but we can have multiple attributes in an attribute table. So when we use our attribute tables, they will be almost exclusively for vector data. Whereas for the raster data, we will be working with pixels and values. And um, you know, if you went into the into the file, you could see the number of columns and rows, and that's all we get. Um, but you'll find out that it's still a very useful data model. Um, don't worry about this. Um, this might, to some of you who are new to GIS, be like, oh my gosh, do I have to go edit individual vertices? No, that's what the GIS program, the GUI, is for, the graphic user interface. It allows us to only look at the data this way and this way. We, we look at tables and kind of um, you know, diagrams or visual diagrams of the data. We don't have to go into the actual files and kind of manipulate them that way. When we edit, let's say we want to edit these uh, vertices, we don't have to type in a new coordinate. We go in and we click and drag and, and pretend like we're just drawing on the earth. So, uh, but we hopefully do that in a very regulated scientific way. <laughs> so anyway, um, real world, um, we can represent the real world with pictures, um, aerial imagery, that kind of thing. But when we move to a map, we make it planar, planimetric, and we use raster data, which is stored where every cell is a location, and we use vector data, where we only store the locations of objects.